let's get start. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I changed the title a bit. So now I changed it to create your own WebGL with JavaScript. <coughs> uh, basically, it's still the same thing. So um, it's going to be a very different topic today, and uh, it's different, but I think it's also very fun. Um, we're not going to talk about how to use WebGL, but today we're going to talk about how to create your own version of Web WebGL. Okay. Um, so first, uh, wait. Uh, just a quick overview of uh, what's WebGL. So uh, just a quick survey here. Uh, anyone here use WebGL before for any projects? It doesn't have to be a very complicated one. A single one like this uh, rotating cube will also count. Uh, OK, so not too many. Um, but uh, for WebGL, what it does is basically uh, you define uh, some uh, ge geometry data, and then there is a set of APIs that you can call. Uh, so you pass this data to these APIs, and then the graphics card will help you render this 3D image for you. Um, so uh, things like uh, bind buffer, uh, draw elements. Uh, for developers, they are like a black box. You don't really uh, know what's happening there, but you know if you pass this data to them, they will render an image for you. So today, this session uh, will help you to uh, understand what is happening there uh, to help you reveal the magic happening in the grips card. Um, so uh, first, I just want to give you guys a very quick example of what we try to <coughs> achieve here. Um, this is a 3D model. Uh, let me open it. So this is 3D model, uh, a chip. And uh, if we open the same model with a text file editor, you will see that it's actually a list of uh, vertices, 3D vertices, basically x, y, z uh, coordinates. And these coordinates define this chip car. And uh, what the graphics the card is doing is you, you give, give it this list of uh, coordinates, it will render this chip car for you. And this is what uh, we try to do here today, to uh, create something uh, that's like WebGL. Uh, it renders the image for you in 3D. And, um, that's uh, what we try to do. Okay. Up to. <coughs> okay, so um, just to recap what we want to do here. Uh, we want to create a system that can render a 3D image from a list of uh, 3D coordinates. And we're not using any uh, libraries, not WebGL, not OpenGL. And uh, we just need a function to uh, write a pixel on screen. That's the uh, only thing we need to do. And uh, we want to support uh, rotating the view, meaning you can see a uh, JIP model there keep rotating. And we want to support textures as well. Uh, it's not just black and white, it's actually very colorful. And uh, we want to support uh, perspective projection as well, uh, meaning, uh, let's say you have two items. Uh, one item is very far away from you and the other one is near to you. And the far away item should be smaller, uh, it should look smaller than the near one. So that's basically pro tech, uh, pro the perspective projection. And, um, uh, to start, uh, let's not start with drawing a Jeep car because uh, it looks very complicated. So let's begin with something uh, simpler, maybe a sphere. So let's say if we want to draw a sphere, uh, what we can do. So uh, there are actually two ways. First is we create a function that can render a sphere. Uh, but then, if say later, later we want to render a cone, we want to render something else, then there's so many shapes in this world, we, we cannot have so many functions, it's endless. So that's actually not a good idea. So maybe you can start running something uh, even simpler than this. So um, uh, this is a screenshot from the 3GS editor. Uh, it's a sphere. And if we take a closer look at it, you will see that it's actually not a sphere. 
is actu is actually uh, a, a group of triangles, and um, the 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 good part about this is um, we 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 actually just need to draw have a function to draw a triangle. Then we can pretty much draw everything uh, we have in the world uh, as long as the, the the triangle is small enough, and we have a a, a, a good number of triangles, we can use it to uh, represent anything in the world. And um, uh, I won't go through this list. Uh, so basically, there are a lot of good uh, reasons we should use a triangle. And um, you know, uh, graphics cards are basically circuits. And uh, on circuit, uh, it's very hard to. Uh, do very complicated logic there. It won't be uh, uh, good for them to uh, have very complicated logic there. So triangles are very easy to render. So uh, with a function to draw a triangle, we can do everything we want. And uh, uh, another thing is, although the triangles are actually in 3D, but our screen is actually in 2D. So which means uh, we don't need to support a function to render a 3D uh, triangle. We just need one to draw a 2D triangle. That's all we need. And uh, the figure here. So uh, it, as you can see from here, uh, triangles can can uh, draw everything actually, as long as you have enough numbers of triangles. <coughs> so uh, the first, the so first. Uh, thing we want to do is to have a function to draw a 2D triangle, which uh, <coughs> sounds very simple actually. And uh, the solution is also quite simple. So what we try to do is uh, we first get a bounding box out of this triangle, uh, the blue uh, ones, uh, the blue one. Um, and then we have some kind of for loop to loop through all the pixels inside this box. And if that pixel is inside this triangle, then maybe we can put the pixel value here as a black one. And if it's not inside the triangle, we just don't do anything. So uh, with this, we can have a, a way to uh, render triangle, a 2D triangle on your screen. And uh, this way doesn't sound very uh, efficient, actually. Um, it's... Uh, I, I, but the reason a lot of hardware are using this because uh, if you uh, take another look at it, uh, it, the implementation can be very simple and it can work in parallel as well. Uh, for GPUs, there's a lot of processors on it. So for GPUs, actually, this kind of way to draw a triangle is, uh, is more, more faster to GPUs, the hardware. So we are using the same way here today. And um, uh, another question, um, maybe it's even, uh, I mean, the, the question might sound very obvious, but uh, how, to, how do we know if a pixel is inside a triangle? Um, so actually, we can do something like this. Uh, this is called barycentric coordinates. Oops. So. Um, so each point on this plan, we can uh, make it into uh, this the location of point A plus uh, U times a vector AB and V times vector AC. So if the uh, direction of these vectors are, are like this, uh, it's inside. And if one of them is uh, uh, in the negative direction, then it's outside. Or if these two values add up together is greater than one, uh, it's also outside. So this is a very simple way to determine if a pixel is uh, inside a triangle. And uh, with this, we now have a function to uh, to draw two D triangle. And um, so what else we need to do? So we now have. Uh, already done step two, which is to draw two D triangles. We also need to do the first step because uh, in three D everything is uh, x, y, z, three axes, right? So, 
how do we find a way to map the 3D triangle to a 2D one? Uh, actually, it's even simpler than the previous uh, question. So we can just drop the z axis actually. Uh, so now we have uh, x and the y axis there, which can be mapped to a 2D screen. And uh, we can just drop the z axis. And once, oh, another thing is to, uh, to keep things uh, easier, uh, let's assume that uh, all the vectors we have are, are within a normalized space, uh, which means um, <coughs> the vectors uh, the in is all within this space. The left here is minus one, uh, the right here is one. And let's say if the screen we have is uh, 800 by 600, and uh, for this point here, which is uh, one, uh, map to here should be 800. So with, uh, and the, the y-axis here, actually for canvas um, in uh, HTML, the y-axis is uh, not uh, uh, here, it's actually uh, going down. So that's why we can add a, a negative uh, y here, so it will correct the direction. <laughs> And um, with all that, we can get something like this. So basically what I did is we want to draw a triangle with, uh, this is the triangle we have, and we uh, run it to this canvas. And uh, it's not a black and white triangle. Uh, you see there's some shading there. Uh, the, the pixel value I put for each pixel is actually the uh, Z value for that pixel. So um, it will help us to uh, understand if it's rendered correctly. And this point here is near to us, which is uh, the Z value is 0 0.3. So it looks darker. And these two points here, uh, which are uh, far away from us, so they, they, they look uh, brighter. And uh, this is just one triangle. Let's say if we have a list of triangles, then uh, this is uh, uh, input, so a lot of triangles, which is uh, <laughs> two bar. <laughs> and we get something like this. Uh, it looks like a jib car now, but still yeah, it's weird actually, uh, because uh, like I mentioned, uh, if the the object is near to you, it should be darker. If it's far away from you, it should be brighter. But here, uh, there are two wheels here. One is very <laughs> bright, and another one is very dark. So something is wrong here. Uh, we'll talk about that later. But uh, first, let's do some cool stuff. Let's add some rotations. So, <coughs> Actually, adding a rotation is also very simple. Um, I'll skip the mask here. So basically, you have a rotation matrix, and you multiply a matrix with a vector, you get the rotated vector. So that's the idea. OK, that's the idea. And uh, uh, so after rotation, what we'll see is something like this. It is rotating, and uh, you'll see it's, it's not <laughs> looking correct. It's definitely not correct. It's uh, so weird, actually. And uh, the reason it's weird is because, you know, we have two objects, but we don't know which one is uh, near to you, which one is far away from you. So the, the, the object that's near to you might be uh, draw first, and the uh, later another object which is far away from you is rendered. So that one overlaps with the previous one. So that's what happened here. So the solution to this problem is uh, you create a depth buffer, so like this one. Uh, so this object is near to you, so it, it looks darker, and this one is very far far away from you. It's brighter. So. Uh, if we add a depth checking here, we can make sure that the objects won't overlap with the ones in the front. So with uh, 
depth testing, it look, it looks much better now. Uh, these two are pretty bright, and the stuff on the uh, back is pretty dark. And uh, we add back the rotation. So now we have something like this. So now it looks correct. With that testing, uh, the pixels won't get overlapped, so now it's looking much better now. One minute? Okay. Uh, so I have one minute left. So uh, then this car is a black and white car, so how do we turn this one into this one, which has a texture? So there's something called texture mapping. So basically for each uh, back vertex here, we also assign it with a UV coordinates, which is uh, uh, assigned to a bitmap. So with that, when you render it, you can interpolate these values here with uh, values from here, so then you get the texture. Basically, a texture is a bitmap like look, look like this, and uh, this plus this, you get the one well, with the texture. And uh, perspective projection as well. So, uh, uh, again, it's a matrix, so you just uh, multiply it with a uh, projected matrix. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty uh, like that. Um, yeah, all together, we will have something like this. It is a car, um, and you can notice that the wheel that's near to you is bigger than the ones far away from you, and uh, it has texture. Uh, it is rotating. It's very slow actually because everything is done in JavaScript. There's no hardware helping us to do any magic. We did everything by ourselves. And uh, this is uh, the talk for, for, for me. So I'm also working on open source 3D uh, CAD tool, so if you guys are interested in 3D and stuff like that, you can also check this out. Uh, it's open source, it's called Cashew. Uh, so basically you can pretty much draw everything from here. It's very intuitive, you don't need to learn anything, but you can uh, sketch your, your model directly. Um, yeah, so pretty cool. So oh, just check it out, yeah, it's called Cashew. Yeah, that's all from me. Thank you guys. Does anyone have any questions? We have five minutes for questions. Uh, do, did you use your tool actually to to build up the Jeep? Because when you showed his endless kind of lines of coordinates, uh -huh. I'm pretty sure you didn't type anywhere. Right? Uh, <laughs> of course not. So basically, uh, I there's a 3GS has a editor. You import models there, and you can uh, export the arrays. Out. So that's what I did. Oh. Yeah, you don't need to uh, manually enter all this <laughs> numbers. So the final question is: Is there any libraries? No libraries or by hand. Yeah. Including all those matrices. Yeah, everything. Yeah. <coughs> uh, can you input the? The performance by running all the on GPU? Uh, yeah, yes, for sure. So uh, graphic cards are designed for this kind of task. So if we find a way to run it on GPU, then definitely it will run faster. Uh, but again, uh, the idea for this is to uh, to talk about how, how the GPU cards are, are working. So <coughs> the idea is the same. So if you translate this JavaScript code into a circuit, you'll get the uh, graphics card, so basically it's like that. Okay, thank you.